Chairman Ibrahim, fellow speakers, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honoured to have been invited on behalf of the Chartered Banker Institute, the oldest institute of bankers in the world, to speak to you today on the need for and role of banking standards both nationally and internationally. I'll focus in particular on professional and education standards for individual bankers rather than standards for banks and banking more broadly. Firstly though, can I congratulate the hosts and organisers of the World Congress of Banking Institutes, our friends and dear colleagues at the Chartered Institute of Bankers in Nigeria, for their leadership, skill and diligence in organising this event. I would like to say this unmissable event, but clearly as you can see I am in fact missing it. I am very sorry not to be with you in person, but I'm actually involved this week with two banking standards events here in the UK that require my presence which I think underlines the importance, the interest in and the timeliness of this topic. Now I hope that you'll find what I have to say in this short video of interest and that it will stimulate the thoughts and contributions of your later speakers. And of course there perhaps is no better forum and no better time to be talking about the need for and role of banking standards than at our World Congress. Enhancing and sustaining professional and education standards for bankers with the aim of raising levels of professionalism worldwide is not something any one country or any one institute can achieve alone. It is by coming together at events such as this and by working together in fora such as the newly established Global Education Standards Committee of which I'll say more later and which I'm deeply honoured to have been elected as chair that we can make a real difference to banks, banking, bankers and to our customers, clients, counterparties and communities and place the global banking industry on a more sustainable foundation of customer-focused ethical professionalism. Which brings me to my first key point. In my view, we need standards for individual bankers, global standards for individual bankers, standards of competence and standards of conduct to support the global standards we have for institutions. Banking is an industry characterised by a high degree of interconnectedness and interdependency between banks at national, international and global levels. That's why we have and continue to develop global standards for banks as institutions. Standards for capital adequacy and liquidity, for example. Standards to prevent fraud, money laundering and financing terrorism. Standards for facilitating swift payments, auditing standards, reporting standards and, and, and much else besides. Unlike other sectors, such as accountancy, though, there are no global standards for individual bankers. Banking institutes such as my own, and many of the institutes represented in Lagos uh, this week, have done much to develop standards nationally, in some cases regionally. There are often many similarities between what we've done in terms of standards development, but there are as yet no recognised global standards for bankers. Following the global financial crisis, the regulatory focus on making banks safer by rebuilding capital and liquidity buffers was understandable. But what is still missing is an equally vigorous pursuit of global standards to enhance our industry's human capital alongside that financial capital to enhance and sustain banking's essential professionalism. So whilst it is up to us as the banking institutes to develop the standards we need, I would like to see global regulators and other bodies such as the Bank for International Settlements, the Financial Stability Forum and the G20 to promote and support the development of global standards of competence and behaviour to enrich our industry's human capital alongside the standards being imposed to strengthen banking's financial capital and other aspects of the organisational and structural nature of banking. We should strive for international consensus on such standards founded on a genuine global commitment in which all banks and all bankers put principles of stewardship, prudence and professionalism first. Since the crisis, regulators have focused, I think possibly quite rightly, on capital reform, making banks safer by increasing banks' capital buffers, banning risky activities, resolving crises without recourse to the taxpayer. There's also been an emphasis on preventative penalties. Banks have faced huge fines for involvement in numerous scandals, 20 global banks, it's been estimated, have paid more than $200 billion in fines and compensation since the 2008 crisis. And certainly UK, US and I think many other regulators around the world now acknowledge the serious effects on banks' capital of these penalties and then the, the knock-on effects on bank lending. 
these penalties that came about because of poor operating cultures and deficient behaviours in the banks. There have been structural reforms precipitated by these malpractices. These have been necessary, but in my view they're not sufficient. They overlook the degree to which public trust in banking rests as critically on human capital as on financial rectitude. And it is human capital that underwrites the need for global standards of professionalism. First, there's an obvious asymmetry of information between banker and customer. And recent crises have demonstrated in retail and wholesale banking, in multiple jurisdictions, that bankers in all cases at all times have access to more information than even the best informed customers and counterparties. Secondly, despite local differences, there's a common body of knowledge and skill required in banking, covering at a minimum level credit, risk, regulation and professional ethics and behaviour. And finally, in all countries, there's a clear public interest in banking's social purpose and the utility functions of banking, and, not least, in avoiding further taxpayer support. It must follow then, at least it follows for me, that it's surely essential for the industry to embed professional norms to provide a defence against future cultural and conduct misadventures and crises. Some good work is being done. Here in the UK this is being done primarily through the Chartered Bank of Professional Standards Board, the CBPSB. Predating the LIBOR scandal, the CBPSB has developed an industry-wide Chartered Banker Code supported by detailed professional standards of conduct and expertise. Covering some 75% of the UK banking workforce, our foundation standard for professional bankers has so far been achieved by more than a quarter of a million bankers. In Europe, the European Bank Training Network launched an international education standard to help banking institutes develop and put into effect professional development programmes sharing common foundations. And internationally, an emerging alliance of banking institutes, the Global Banking Education Standards Board, will develop voluntary global education standards through a new Education Standards Committee, just established, comprising members from our hosts here in Nigeria, Australia, Malaysia, including our colleague Kay Luan, who you'll hear from, I think, later during this session, Hong Kong and the Bahamas. The Vice Chairs are Dr Misra from the Indian Institute of Banking and Finance and Marie Muldowney from CSI Canada, and as I mentioned earlier, I have the honour of, of chairing the committee. Drawing on the work of institutes from around the world, what we plan to do, initially, is to develop a standard, or perhaps standards prescribing the core competences the knowledge, the skills, the behaviours required of professional bankers, so personal, interpersonal, technical, communicational, organisational competences, and secondly to develop a standard prescribing the professional values, ethics and attitudes we believe professional bankers in all countries should acquire. Now although these may sound relatively modest goals, I can tell you from my own experience of trying to develop and implement these at a national level in banking here in the UK and from my previous global experience at the International Federation of Accountants, these are ambitious aims. And it won't be sufficient simply to develop and publish standards. That's actually the easy bit. The world doesn't need any more bits of paper or more checklists for tick box type compliance. The ambition will be for the standards to be adopted by banking institutes worldwide and in turn by banks, bankers and regulators in each country. These may be voluntary global education standards, but to make them effective, we will need the support of national and international regulators who have a clear interest in encouraging the development of global standards of ethical and professional competence. A global approach has worked elsewhere previously, most notably post Enron in accountancy, with the support of key regulators. It can work in banking too. The second key point I'd like to make, which builds on my earlier points around educational and professional standards, is the importance of developing and maintaining bankers' professional and technical competence alongside their ethical awareness and behaviour. Ethics is a hot topic worldwide now, and not just for bankers. Think of politics, sport, religion and the wider business world. But, rightly or wrongly, there's a perception that perhaps the words banking and ethics don't go together very well in the same sentence, and that a lack of ethics played a key role not only in the global financial crisis but in many local problems in many countries involving mis-selling, poorly aligned incentives and misplaced conflicts of interest. There seems to be general international agreement now that bankers should develop and demonstrate appropriate values, attitudes and behaviours, which are often referred to as ethics or morality 
and there's been an explosion of ethics programmes for bankers. There's no harm in such programmes and they may even be helpful in reinforcing ethical expectations, but if we seek to influence day-to-day decision-making and promote positive outcomes for our customers, these general moral values cannot be developed in isolation. It's not enough simply to be a good person. We need good bankers, too. And that means that appropriate values, attitudes and behaviours must be supported by appropriate levels of professional and technical knowledge and skill. Without an in-depth understanding of customers' needs, the bank's products and services, risk about the potential positive and negative impacts of a particular course of action or decision on customers, colleagues and the wider community, bankers at all levels cannot ensure the positive outcomes expected and required. As we've seen, even good banks, such as the Co-op Bank here in the UK, can behave poorly. Institutions with a strong ethical mission, such as credit unions, can and do fail. And almost always behind this is a lack of professional competence. It's no use having the right tone from the top if those at the coalface cannot deliver through a lack of ethical, professional, technical competence. And this is where the role of professional bodies nationally, regionally and globally is key in helping individuals develop and demonstrate the ethical and professional competence required. In other words, it's a bit of a bump from the bottom to support the tone from the top. And again, this is one area where I think the international regulatory community may play a role in supporting the development of international standards of ethical and professional competence for bankers, which could, and in my view should, sit alongside technical standards for bankers, such as those developed by the Basel Committee. To conclude, therefore, and hopefully finish setting the scene for the other speakers and for some lively debate, we've seen the development of global standards for many aspects of banking, but not yet global standards for the human capital, for the banker on which the success and stability of our industry ultimately rests. With the great technical and organisational complexity of banks and banking, we forget that this is still a people business, led and staffed by people, offering services and support to people. This is a truism that's intuitively understood by banking institutes, focused as we are on the individual bankers who are the beating heart of our industry, of our banking profession. But, as I've argued, Enhancing and sustaining professional and education standards for bankers with the aim of raising levels of professionalism worldwide is not something any one country or any one institute could or should attempt to achieve alone. We need to develop and embed global standards and we need your support if we're to make a real difference to banks, banking, bankers and to our customers, clients, counterparties and communities and place the global banking industry on a more sustainable foundation of customer-focused ethical professionalism. Thank you.